Not too long ago, I posted a video that covered the process of how to route both the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro devices. And at the end of making that video, I wasn't entirely sure whether I would leave my regular Pixel 6 routed because I didn't want to lose access to some really important apps I use every day. See, back when I used to regularly route my main everyday devices, which was sometime back in 2020, both Google Pay and Service New South Wales, which is an app that holds a digital copy of my driver's license, they both stopped working and no fix I found could resolve the issue. And these are apps I rely on every single day. So for quite some time, I actually just stopped routing my everyday phones. But then I found out that Launch Air 12 had been released and that it worked with Quick Switch on rooted devices running Android 12. And being someone who absolutely loathes the Pixel Launcher and how limiting it is in regards to customization, I was like, gee, I might have to go back to the drawing board here and see if I can figure it out. And I did. Now, if you watched my review of the Pixel 6, you'll know that I've actually been using that phone as my main everyday device with root access enabled and both Service New South Wales and Google Pay working as good as gold ever since I first rooted it. And that actually remains true even to this day. I even manually sideloaded the December software patch and everything is still working beautifully. So I thought I better make a video detailing exactly how I did it. So without further ado, let's dive in. So first things first, if you've already got your phone rooted while simultaneously being on Android 12, then I'm assuming you've already got the latest Canary version of Magisk installed. But if not, make sure you updated it because in order for this process to work, we'd need the version of Magisk that includes the Zigisk functionality, which is kind of like the new version of Magisk Hired, which is now being discontinued. Assuming you have that version installed, from there on our phones, we want to download a Magisk module called Magisk Hide Props Config. And I've left a link to where you can download this down in the description, as well as everything else mentioned in this video. But once it's downloaded, we then want to launch the Magisk Manager application, navigate over to the module section, and then tap the button at the top to install a module from our phone storage. Go ahead and find that Magisk Hide Props config file in your downloads folder and select it, and then it should be automatically installed. Once complete, you can go ahead and tap the reboot button to restart your device. From there, if you don't have one installed already, you'll need to now download and install a terminal emulator application. My go-to option is called Termix, so again, I'll leave that linked below. But with the terminal application opened, we'll go ahead and type su space dash c space props and then hit enter. We'll then get a prompt to grant the app super user access. So go ahead and grant it and then it should launch the Magisk Hide Props config automatically. Now we'll type the number two, which is to force basic key attestation and then hit enter. This will take us to the force basic key attestation page and by default, the value is set to Nexus five, but I found success with the Nexus six P value. So to change it, I'll type in D then hit enter. Then I'll type seven, hit enter. And then finally I'll type five. And once again, hit enter. It will now ask you to confirm the new value. So type Y for yes, and then enter. We'll now need to reboot the device. So to do this, we'll type Y. And then once again, say it with me, we'll hit enter. All right, with that sorted out and our phone rebooted, we can now launch back into the Magisk application. And then we can tap on the settings icon up here. We'll come down to the Magisk section and we then need to enable the Zigis toggle here, then the Enforce Deny List toggle, and then we can come into this Configure Deny List menu. And this is basically an updated version of Magisk Hide. You then need to just toggle any apps in this list that usually don't work with root access enabled. So I'll first enable the toggle for the Service New South Wales application. You can do the same for any apps as necessary. I'll also do the same for Google Pay, but to get Google Pay to actually work, we also have to hide Magisk from Google Play services, which isn't actually in this list by default. So to make sure we can see it on the list, we'll tap this button here and select the check mark to enable system apps within the list. And we can then find the Google Play services section and make sure every option on this list is toggled on. Okay, now I need to download another Magisk module called Universal Safety Net Fix, which again, I'll leave linked below. But once it's downloaded, we'll come back to the module section within Magisk, tap on install from storage, and then tap the Safety Net Fix module we just downloaded. We can then hit reboot. 
Okay, with our phone rebooted, there's just a couple of small steps from here. The first is to clear the data from any of the apps that haven't been working due to root access being enabled. So for example, I'll find the Google Pay app in my app drawer, long press it, select app info, then go to the storage and cache section and select clear storage. Do the same for any app you've been having trouble with. Now, when I tried this process on my Pixel 5, I actually didn't need to do anything else. The apps in question like Google Pay and Service New South Wales, they started working again, no dramas. But if you are still running into issues like I did with my Pixel 6, then you might actually need to hide the Magisk app itself. To do this, open it up and head into the settings menu. Then select the hide the Magisk app option. And then when I did this process on my Pixel 6, I changed the name here to hashtag one. Now, usually after another reboot, things should be working just as expected. But funnily enough, during the process of filming this video, Google Pay was actually still broken for me following this entire process. So to get it to eventually work, I found the Google Play services settings menu and cleared all data from that. And once that was complete, I opened up Google Pay, registered my card again, and finally Google Pay was up and ready for action. And so there you have it. A little complicated, but not overly so, particularly when you consider the benefits. And again, the fact that I've been able to root my Pixel 6 and still use both Google Pay and the Service New South Wales application without any issues at all has seriously leveled up my experience of using this phone. If you found this video helpful, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you missed the recent announcement, I've just launched my YouTube channel membership page, which has two different levels, both of which give you access to a bunch of extra goodies, including monthly promo code giveaways and a members only Discord, plus a heap of other stuff as well. So there's a link in the description to where you can check that out and get involved in that growing community. Aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.